You're on candid camera. <laughs> Hi team. So um, <laughs> our Media Watch episode that we focused on um, aired last uh, this pre this coming uh, this just last gone Sunday um, uh, was one of those episodes that covered a range of topics. So we chose the story um, lab uh, labelled caustic claims of conflict of interest. It, um, if you want to maybe check for the next slide, it focused on um, the um, like recent. Uh, Mike Hosking, News Talk ZB uh, session about how he uh, didn't like uh, examples of journalists uh, being involved in personal promotion or, excuse me, uh, promotional advertising or product endorsement. So we used a couple of examples, um, such as Maddie McLean um, in Mike Hosking's words, spruiking a coffee machine, and also um, Jessica Much Mackay, the TVNZ political ele um, editor, endorsing some health and food products online on their social media. Um, Mike Hosking definitely kind of um, took grievance with this. There is a TVNZ policy in place which um, applies to pretty much anyone working um, at TVNZ that tells them that they shouldn't be involved in any promotional advertising um, endorsements of products or companies as it does as it, as it could definitely be um, a conflict of interest to their professional storytelling. Um, that blanket rule, which we'll touch on a little bit later, was in fact created because of Mike Kosking himself and some of his practices in the past. Um, but these protocols, as we've written, are in place to, um, yeah, just protect or safeguard against that kind of conflict of interest. Journalists shouldn't really be in positions where they are influencing the general public about certain products or um, or organisations um, like that. Yeah, next slide, perhaps. Um, so a, a couple of points about um, the pillars that were touched on. Um, for the first pillar we selected, um, journalism must serve as an independent monitor of power. So a couple of points from the reading. Um, so news is in fact increasingly becoming quite commercial um, and this is happening pretty much for the first time in history so there's the kind of fear that independent news could be replaced with um, self-interested commercialism so replaced fully meaning that we're not even going to focus on that kind of independent news anymore um, so as we see um, in that pillar uh, Journalism must serve as an independent monitor of power. So that kind of behaviour or that kind of um, undertaking of personal uh, promotion could really interfere with that. Um, just a little bit of a note. So uh, journalists benefiting from any form of promo work can definitely feed into that fear that um, the ultimate obligation for us as journalists is to hold power to account and inform the general public um, so that can definitely be interfered with with, with this kind of um, behaviour online, let's call it. So can we as journalists be trusted in fact to hold power to account if we are known to be, uh, let's say, in bed with companies or for-profit organisations? We get into a, what we were talking about, a really grey area here. Yeah. So, um, you know, a political editor, for example, Jessica Much Mackay, should be held to you know high standards of uh, in codes of conduct she is a serious journalist let's say and her word is um is listened to but um as we, as i say we do get into a really great um area here so because that creates a i guess a precedent for the next journalist to come along and do the same thing or not do the same thing and that could um cause issues within your Network, for example, if, if um, this journalist does this and I want to do the same thing, and then I'm not allowed to because of the precedent that was set by that journalist, that can um, may perhaps upset me. Um, we have a picture here to um, illustrate. The, I, ha I, ha I have a bit of a chuckle about this, to be fair. So, Maddie McLean is not a perhaps at the moment serious journalist let's say he's the presenter of the breakfast tv program and 
maybe that borders a little bit on more about infotainment or um, something like that. But I believe that as a person in the media, in the media industry, he probably should be held account um, to the same standards that someone like Jessica Much McKay is. So um, Matty chucked on his um, Instagram a reel about his new Rebel um, coffee machine. And so it went up, as you see, as an ad. But I guess the question here is, should journalists in any capacity be using these types of ads to um, for personal benefit? It should have been got by the exclamation police as well. Two exclamation marks in <coughs> one paragraph. <Sweet. laughs> awesome, now I'll take it away from here. Uh, so the second pillar that we kind of chose to um, relate to in regards to this uh, story was um, Oh, right now there. So it's first loyalty is to citizens. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. So uh, journalists must strive to put the public interest and the truth above their own self-interest or assumptions, um, uh, as said by Kovac and Rosine Steele in 2001. Um, and so I've got a sound clip here. Let's put the plays. Um, this is just a quote about my costume. There's was... another guy named called Matty McLean. I don't know Matty from the bar or so, but he hosts the breakfast show on television. I don't know that he calls himself a journalist, so I wouldn't have a clue. But he sprucks a coffee machine. He's on Instagram talking about his coffee machine. He gets free coffee machines and fantastic. Now, I don't have as much problem with that as I do with Jessica Much Mackay as the political editor of the state run television channel endorsing health and food products as gifts. Right, so uh, hopefully that kind of um, paints a picture on what the story was about. And so he um, goes on to quote, um, when did it become acceptable for the political editor of any organization slash state-owned organization to receive, sorry, receive and declare gifts? Uh, so this is kind of the um, pillar that um, challenges journalism, right? Should that be allowed? Um, I know I've written down here, so news, news organizations answer to adv advertisers, shareholders, that's all normal. Um, but journalists within those organizations must maintain allegiance to their citizens and the wider public interest above any other if they are to provide the news without fear or favor. Um, so I think, um, as Jordan said, uh, no matter what capacity, whether you are a political editor or a uh, infotainment breakfast show host, uh, you still have this obligation to serve, you know, serve your citizens first. I think uh, as a journalist, I think that's your, that should be your number one priority. Um, and yeah, I've written down here, so avoid speaking for people in power and remember to hold into account, uh, don't get too comfortable and too deep in bed with sources. Thank you. <clears throat> and the third pillar of, um, journalism that we thought was relevant was that um, journalists must be independent from the people that they cover. So um, Ko Kovac and Rosen Steel write that um, it's even more important for journalists to be independent than it is for them to be neutral because that's how we know that we will be adhering to the purest um, principles of journalism, which is to be, um, which is to basically just be truthful, nothing but the truth. So under this, Mike Hosking is claiming that um, Maddie McLean and Jessica Much McKay doing promotions is, well, unacceptable under this, uh, you know, standard of journalism. But there is a bit of a gray area in this because yes, you can say that they're not exactly being independent when they advertise uh, coffee machines. But at the same time, um, Jessica Much McKay is the political editor and she's talking about like health foods. Is you know those are sort of independent areas. So you could argue that, well, you know she's still independent in her actual field of work, which is um, you know political topics. Um, ironically, an area where there is not a gray area is with Mike Hosking's own deals. When he worked at TVNZ about ten years ago, it came out that he had. Uh, you know, sort of like a personal deal with Sky City that gave him about $48,000 worth of goodies. So TV and Z themselves actually did not know about this. And when they did, they said, you can't report about um, Sky City anymore. Sky City was relevant politically back then because at the time we had the whole 
um, debacle with the Sky City Convention Center. So it did seem a bit um, ironic coming from him. So um, yeah, that's just what I have to say on that. So um, we had a bit of uh, analysis that we discussed earlier, and we just wanted to pose a few questions to you guys. Um, so should Jessica Much McKay, as a state TV political editor, be allowed to have a public life persona outside of work? What do you guys? Yeah. What do you guys? What do you guys? Raise your hands. What do you guys reckon? Maybe, maybe we can just do a quick poll. So, do, do you think that Jessica Much Mackay should be able to endorse some health and food products and on her own time, on her personal Instagram account? My brother in the middle. Oh, yeah, Instagram. She should be able to. I yep. like you as well. I agree. Uh, she's a human. So she's just like everyone else. So. That's, that's exactly what we were debating. Because she's a public editor. I, I guess you would be very. She just have to be very careful in the way that she went about it. Is what my opinion. I don't know. What do you guys think? I can see both sides. So I get that she has her own personal life and yeah. that what she's promoting is kind of a bit dishonest for what she does it for long. But then also it does actually sway people and not really know if she truly means what she's saying versus she doesn't have the backbone to endorse on what she is. So yeah. She becomes kind of the norm and then it's like the gray area suddenly mm -hmm. becomes a lot Mm. Wider, what happens if the food industry suddenly has a political angle like the fight over sugar versus fat this kind of thing we know that there's been there's a lot of poli political angles to food a lot especially in terms of New Zealand and <clears throat> the dairy industry all of that I would argue that it's fine because you're very much wherever she I do treat it as a public I was going to say, like, it's kind of like sort of redundant when the vast majority of news outlets and entire time has come from outside of the industry. But I get that she's working for a state TV. I don't think it but matters. Then, no, because as right. we said, the separation between what the news industry owes its allegiance to and the journalists that work with, within those, yeah. even with commercial, journalists are expected for their first allegiance to be to the public. Yeah, I don't think that's advertising a product outside of your work environment is infringing on that. So it's um, seeing as the, the basis of how all news media operate. I don't understand why there would be a double standard on the journalist itself, so the outlet and the outlet's the one that has the influence to actually really dictate what's published and what isn't. Do you have a journalist that you really admire? Yeah. Think about that journalist advertising something irrelevant, but just advertising something else. Spruiking. Yeah, they do. Ha they do? Yeah, they do. Because they have to advertise their own merch or like merch that they're working with other collaborators to be able to fund the narrative in the journalist. If it wasn't for that, they'd have to work for a big media company. I see. Ah, so you're talking about right. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, it's like, to me, it's like, I get that the position she's in on like a state network kind of affects it. But if she was working for like stuff, I don't see why stuff as a company gets to benefit from the monetary advantage of advertising that the journalists themselves in their free time is not allowed. Mm. Mm. For me, I think about it always in terms, and I take your points, and you know, we need to think about this as we move forward into a more complex world. For me, as a journalist, all you've got is your reputation. That is what people trust you to give them the truth, to give them what they, you know, the, the um, what's happening at, you know, the, the angle on things um, without fear or favor. And if your reputation, if you be, become, say, associated with certain things, what happens if something goes wrong with that, with that product? If you suddenly find that it's not, your reputation is potentially damaged. When you've got a damaged reputation, your authority as a spokes, you know, as a, as a, as a journalist, as a spokesperson for your stories, becomes damaged. So it's something always to bear in mind. But your points are totally valid. Totally valid. We, we, we had the same kind of debate. Oh, we did you? What did you come? Day. What did you come down on? Uh, I guess the general consensus was, and to kind of lead into the treatment of the story, was that. Um, so the, the treatment of the story by uh, Colin Peacock, the host. Um, last Sunday, it, I, we don't think it shied away from holding all persons of interest um, 
mentioned or featured in the story to account. So um, <laughs> the way the story was laid out was pretty much Mike Hosking's sound bites, and then Colin Peacock then launched into the, like the second half of the story, and it was just all based on uh, Mike Hosking's practices to do with Sky City and that kind of thing. So um, I think we came to a, like a general consensus that we kind of bought Mike Hosking's point in, in that sense that um, serious journalists perhaps have that obligation to be impartial. Um, so yes, yeah, so, but then host Colin Peacock definitely uh, critically examined Hosking's practices through that same lens that Mike Hosking um, uh, mentioned. He, he says no fear, no favour in relation to what he thought Jessica Much Mackay had done wrong. Um, the treatment was, I reckon, very impartial and it um, definitely held everyone to account. I wonder how Mike Hosking felt listening to that <laughs> episode. He probably thought, like, oh, should I probably put my foot in the air a little bit? Um, <laughs> he raises a very, very valid point, which I probably agree with. I, I, I personally don't believe that Jessica Much Mackay or for, that, or, or for that matter, Maddie McLean should be really too deeply involved in um, product endorsement or anything like that. The world is moving towards uh, commercial commercialism by itself, so I don't think it probably needs much more encouragement from media personnel than that. Um, Mike, do you want to read out this one? Um, well, yeah, so I mean, this is kind of like the very area that we were talking about, like, um, should it be okay, should it be, or is it, is it not allowed? Um, so I mean, like, just the general kind of hands in the air, so like, do you guys reckon that Mike Hosking has a point, as in, um, if he's right in saying that Jessica Much Mackay um, shouldn't be endorsing these brands, what do you guys reckon? Uh, hand, raise hands if you think yes, he's right. She shouldn't be raising these. Uh, yeah, you're willing not to? Don't need to rush. Everyone else is maybe. Like, again, the gray area. 